Hi! Welcome to Pollen Morphology Training Part 4, Surface Patterns. Let's talk about surface patterns. Here is an overview of the questions we will discuss today. What is the wall structure on a pollen grain? And what are the variations in wall structure? How do you measure a pollen grain's wall? What is LO analysis? How do you use LO analysis to identify surface patterns? Can more than one surface pattern be present on a grain? Wall structure. The outer layer of the pollen wall is known as the exine. The inner layer of the pollen wall is known as the intine. This layer typically gets destroyed during the acetolysis process. The tectum is the outer layer of the exine. Grains may be considered tectate, semi-tectate, or intectate. Tectate grains have a continuous tectum. Semi-tectate grains have a partially discontinuous tectum. And intectate grains are lacking a tectum. Columella. A columella is a rod-like structural element often used to support the tectum. Columellae may also be freestanding, as found in semi-tectate grains. Wall evenness. The thickness of the wall may vary. It may appear even all the way around the grain, or the wall may appear thinner or thicker at the poles. Wall measurements. To measure the thickness of a pollen grain's wall, simply measure the thickness of the exine. Refer to the cartoon representation above for an example. Now let's talk about LO analysis. LO analysis is a technique that can help you identify the surface pattern of a pollen grain when observed with light microscopy. The term LO stands for the Latin words lux, meaning light, and obscuritus, meaning darkness. When you are observing a pollen grain at the highest plane of focus, any raised sculpturing elements will appear lighter, while the lower areas, or depressions, will appear darker. The use of this technique can help the user determine if they are seeing raised sculpturing elements or depressions on the surface. This will help the user properly identify the surface pattern of the grain. Let's look at an example of a grain with depressions on the surface. Take a moment to watch the brief C-Stack video below. In the higher planes of focus, those depressions appear as darkened areas. As you focus through the grain, those areas then become lighter. Now let's take a look at an example of a grain with raised elements on the surface. Watch the Z-Stack below. In the higher planes of focus, those raised elements appear as lighter areas. As you focus through the grain, those areas then become darker. Now let's talk about the various types of surface patterns. Properly identifying surface ornamentation is an important part of pollen morphology. These ornamentations can vary greatly, so it can be a helpful identification tool. The categories of surface patterns are shown below. Let's take a look at an example for each category. Sealate grains have a completely smooth surface.
Now the following surface ornamentations have raised structural elements. The use of LO analysis will help the user identify these surfaces. Scabrate grains have sculptural elements that measure less than one micrometer. The surface may have the appearance of rough sandpaper. Granulate grains have sculptural elements of varying shape and size that measure less than one micrometer. The surface may appear irregular. For our purposes, most granulate grains are also considered to be scabrate. Rubellate grains have elongated sculpturing elements that are greater than one micrometer in length. Areola verrucate grains have small convex islands that are more than one micrometer tall, separated by grooves and they are never constricted at the base. They may even appear wart-like. Baculate grains have rod-shaped sculpturing elements that are longer than they are wide and greater than one micrometer in height. Clavate pelate grains have either club-shaped sculpturing elements or rod-shaped sculpturing elements with knobbed heads with a height greater than one micrometer. The diameter of the structural elements will be smaller than its height and the apex will be thicker than the base. Gemmate grains have sculpturing elements greater than one micrometer in height, and their width measures approximately the same as the height. They are typically constricted at the base and may appear balloon-like. Echinate and microechinate surface patterns. Echinate are pointed sculpturing elements. If the echinate are greater than one micrometer in height, then the grain is considered to be echinate. If the echinate are less than one micrometer in height, then the grain is considered to be microechinate. Echinate and microechinate grains can be further categorized based on the height of the echinate as shown in the cartoon image above. Here is an example of an echinate grain. And here's an example of a micro echinate grain. Striate grains have elongated sculpturing elements that run more or less parallel to each other. The surface may even have the appearance of a fingerprint.
The following surface ornamentations have structural elements that appear as depressions or holes on the surface of the grain. The use of LO analysis will help the user identify these surfaces. Foveolate grains have holes or depressions one micrometer or greater in diameter with the distance between two adjacent depressions being larger than their diameter. Perforate grains have small holes or depressions that are less than one micrometer in diameter. Reticulate and microreticulate surface patterns. Reticulate and microreticulate grains have sculpturing elements known as muri arranged in a network-like pattern, which creates depressions known as lumina. In reticulate grains, these areas are one micrometer or greater in diameter. In microreticulate grains, these areas are less than one micrometer in diameter. These ornamentation types are some of the most common surface patterns that you will encounter. LO analysis is the best way to identify these surface patterns. Here is an example of a reticulate grain. Here's an example of a micro reticulate grain. Striate reticulate grains have parallel rows of muri linked together to form reticulum within the groups. Some grains may have more than one surface pattern present. If that is the case, the most prominent surface ornamentation should be described as the primary surface pattern. The other pattern may be included, but it would be considered to be a secondary pattern. Here's an example. This grain has large echini present, making the primary surface pattern for this grain echinate. But there are also smaller bacula present, making the secondary pattern for this grain baculate. Now take a moment to watch the Z-Stack video for the same grain. Be sure to pay close attention to the surface ornamentation present, observing both the echini and the bacula that are present on the surface. Join us next time for part five, additional information. Thanks for joining us. This concludes part four of our pollen morphology training series.